Mike McCowlitz, welcome to Podcasting Made Simple slash Pod Pros. So glad to have you here today, man. Alex, man, it's good to be back. Uh, you know, I can always count on you for a good time, man. Like I, every time we <laughs> record together, it's a good time. Like you were totally down to do something totally weird at the beginning. And for anyone listening who hasn't watched it, go watch the video and, and see what we're talking about here. <laughs> Small hands, weird glasses, gum being chewed. All the normal stuff. You know, that's yeah. just what people do in this space. Um, totally. <laughs> anyway, man, hey, so I've, I've respected you for a long time as an entrepreneur, as a leader in the space, as an educator. Man, you've just helped me so much. And uh, I, I, it's, it's funny. I was telling you this before we recorded. You're like releasing content as I'm needing it. And uh, I'm just that. so thankful for that, man. So it's been really great to stay connected. And this is my third time interviewing you. So I'm, I'm excited to be here today. With that said, man, I want to go ahead and just jump straight into this because I know we don't have a lot of time together. Uh, we're talking to podcast guests and podcast hosts today. And so a lot of this, I really want to talk about from the perspective of your book, Get Different, which is all about marketing and things like that. Uh, the first thing you talk about in this book that I want you to cover is it is our responsibility to market. Can you speak to that point for a minute? And then we'll kind of drill that down as a podcast guest and podcast host. Yeah, I think, Alex, there's a little bit of this build it and they will come kind of mentality. Like I have this remarkable product or service and people disappear and then they don't. If you have a remarkable product or service, if you're doing something of, of service to others, damn it, you have to market it. You have to have people discover it. I was at a conference and uh, I was presenting and I said, I just want to know who in this room is better than their competition in some capacity, some meaningful way. And I said, just be honest. If you're not, you're, it's cool. I would say 80%, 90% of the hands went up right away. And uh, I pointed at each person and said, you're, I guarantee you're right. Small businesses, inevitably, they were all small businesses, have some kind of distinct advantage over their competition. The owner knows more. They have more experience. They just care more. And I'm like, if you're better and you're not being discovered, shame on you. You have to be discovered because it's a disservice for our clients to engage with someone else. So that's why it's a responsibility. Yeah, man, I, I couldn't agree with that more. And for podcast hosts on that side of the mic, I can't tell you how many shows I've been on that as a guest that I would have never discovered other than the fact that I was a guest on the show. And yeah. sometimes, I mean, they just get it. Like the shows are so good. And what I, what I hear from really both sides of the mic, they're like, oh, well, I love podcasting, but I'm not really a marketer. Like I'm yeah. not really even sure what to do. What are your thoughts on that? Do you have any perspective? I know you've been on both sides of the, uh, both sides of the mic as a host and a I guest have, many times. Well, you know, it goes back to responsibility. You have responsibility. Um, but the funny thing is, I think mar when someone says they're not a marketer, they say, I'm not a marketer like other people. Like I, I don't know how to do this Facebook ads or Instagram. And I'm telling you, you don't. You actually just have to be more of you, express you in your own way. So I'm a goof. That's why I got my little hands here with me that we were using in the beginning and stuff. Why we start off with sunglasses on. Sunglasses, you know, yeah, yeah. You have sunglasses. I'm like, do I have sunglasses? I got like 50 pairs here. I was going to wear these ones. Like I got all the whack things. I should start off with these things, the star glasses. I think we need to just start over now. I, yeah, I'm I should just start with these and go, yeah, yeah, yeah. But the, the, the point simply is we all have our own unique idiosyncrasies and we can exploit that. If you're super serious... Be the Spock of the industry and be super serious and get the word out like that. Go to where other geeks are hanging out. So if, if you're the super technical, where are all the other technical people hanging out? Go there and just be there. At the end of the day, there's this thing called congregation points. Birds of a feather flock together. People that like the same thing hang out in the same area. Our job is to find out what those areas are. And if it's a group that resonates with us or we resonate with them, just insert yourself in the group. You don't have to be good. You just have to be you. And when you're you start getting exposure. That's such a good point. I, I think one of the flaws I see in podcasting, this is more specifically from the host side. And this is something I did from the start. I thought I had to create my own community. Like it had to just be mine. And there, there's some, right. some benefit to that. But what I should have done when I got started, a, a very unknown individual with a last name that's unspellable. Uh, you, were, you resonate with that, yeah. um, right? Like I should have just jumped into where my tribe was and not tried to lead it, just try to be in it and add a little bit of value. And I think that's a that, really that, good point. You just nailed the hack. Like show over, we're done. That's it. Like I, the, the, anyone listening to that that heard that, if you don't do that, we can't help you. Like, that's it. Just find the community that's already established. They're, the, the reason these, these communities established, by the way, is because they share common interests. They exchange knowledge. So when you are simply present there and only one person discovers you because they're there to share interests and knowledge, they start becoming viral about you. What's also fascinating is when you stay within one community, maybe they gather online on Reddit. Maybe they, they have a conference or two. Just go there. All of a sudden, to that community, you're everywhere. 
It's like, oh my God, Alex just keeps showing up. I see him everywhere. He showed up in three spots, but the three same spots that they look. Oh, man, that's, that's powerful. You're right. We could end here, but we've got to keep on dr- drilling in here. I want to dive into actually what you call the dad marketing framework. Uh, can you quickly overview what that is, and we'll dive into each of those points? Yeah, so the, the Get Different framework is based upon uh, an acronym I call DAD. The first thing we need to do in our marketing is differentiate. There's this concept called habituation, and it's a biological behavior. When we, a, a person, sees a certain stimulus and has already experienced it before and has no benefit, it's, it's innocuous, we then disregard it forevermore. Here's an example. Uh, you walk down the street, there's a million advertisements you never see because you know they're not relevant. In New York City, I live outside New York City, um, one of the most deadly um, car accidents, I guess, were from rescue vehicles running over people for a period of time. And the reason was people had become habituated to the sirens. They would hear sirens say, oh, I hear them all the time, it's not me, and jaywalk and get hit by one of these rescue vehicles. So they changed the siren tone so we'd notice again. So that's a lesson. If you're not differentiating your common noise, you're ignored. Even if you hit people in the face, they don't even see until you're upon them. So do something no one else is doing. Now, don't confuse that with outrageous. I'm not saying you have to wear the goofy glasses and have the small mini hands. You you just have to be what no one else is. And usually, or inevitably, that's just being you, but the most of you. The next part of the acronym is A, stands for attract. Different gets attention, but only lasts for about a millisecond. You must secondarily be attractive, meaning the audience that sees that say, oh, that's for me. So if you do something that's outrageous or different or weird and people notice, but they're like, that's outrageous and weird and I feel uncomfortable, they'll never do business with you. Like if I dress like a clown for this show, people may have noticed, but that's a little extreme. Like this is kind of like, why is Bozo or Yucko the clown here? So understand what your audience wants and you have to translate that into your message. So different in a way that's attractive. And the last thing is must give direction. How many great advertisements or marketing pieces have you seen that you're like, oh, that was so funny. Now, who's that Who's that for? Like, what's that about? We, we as a small business, we, we can't re- win brand equity. We can't run a commercial a thousand times uh, like some other places do to win over our favor. We have one shot at this. So you have to have a call to action. The key is it needs to be small enough that the person feels that it's safe to do it, but big enough that's a substantial step in the direction you want to move. So there's a kind of a Goldilocks situation here. It needs to be just right. That's the three stages. So differentiate for attention, attract for engagement, and direct for results. That's right. I that's wanna, right. I want, yeah, you know, I, I read the book, so here we go. <laughs> um, well, I want to dive into these one at a time. First off, when it comes to podcasting, uh, on either side of the mic, and I'll explain why, as a host... There's a lot of podcasts out there. When someone's looking at, uh, let's just imagine one of the app store or one of the, the, the places you can listen to podcasts, right? There's a lot of cover art. There's a lot of titles and stuff like that. And on the flip side, when people are trying to be guests on shows, there's estimated to be something like 12 million people trying to be on shows now. Like what needs to happen on either side of the mic to really separate yourself? And let's, let's talk about both sides of this just for a moment. But from a host, what is something you've seen that someone's done a good job differentiating themselves. Yeah. I think the first thing is we got to focus on those micro communities to move to the macro communities. I think trying to come out big and like, I want the next Joe Rogan show. That's wonderful. Um, but you, you, chances are you're not going to hit out of the gate that well. Who's the micro mo- community that'll carry you? I remember this one podcast. It's, um, it's called, uh, my favorite murder and it targets the female audience predominantly. Uh, and, and it focuses middle-aged female women, and I know because my wife is an Uber fan. And it speaks to stuff that happened in the 70s, 80s, and 90s, so it's targeting that marketing. And they're very true to that audience. They have nicknames for themselves. They call themselves the Murderinos. Well, that show, they cared for the community so well that the community brought them to a broader audience. And yes, I listen to episodes now. So the key is don't start broad Start narrow. Speak so well to that community that they say, you know me better than anyone else, and that's how you win favor. Man, that, that, that's the best wisdom you can give a podcast host. I hope everyone really heard, heard that and really takes that to heart. To flip the script now on the guest side of things, again, with it getting a little bit, not a little bit, very competitive for podcast guests, let's imagine there's 10 experts in the same field. What do you do to, to stand out today? Yeah, so you want to track that marquee guest. Do something that no one else does. It's, it's the old dad model. Um, I'm very fortunate. I get invited often to shows. I'm, I'm thrilled to be on your show. Um, we have a rapport, and that's why I came back. Most shows, 
I, I get enough inquiries that I, I don't do it anymore um, because it's a, it's a time investment. But there's one show that sent me this wonderful box with all these cool gifts. And it wasn't like their promotional materials. It was um, brand new guitar strings, so I like to play guitar, um, picks with my own name on it. And they also sent a cigar box guitar. And I'm like, oh my, is it, which is like a mini guitar made out of a cigar, cigar box. And they're like, hey, we want to jam out with you on our show. Hope you enjoy this, regardless if you decide to come on board. Now, here's what they did. It was different. I don't get boxes like that. So I noticed. It was attractive because it spoke my language. The direct was beautiful. They said, we'd love to jam out with you on our show if you want to, but don't feel obligated. They didn't force this upon me. It was an open invite that I could decline or accept. So I accepted of course, I mean, of course, there's no like really, there's no way to say no at that point. I, I yeah. love. But could you imagine saying, "Hey, you, you know, we want you in our show. Hopefully, this is a gesture that that indicates that." Then it's like, "Oh, oh, you're manipulative." It's ironic. It was the same thing. It was not manipulative. It was persuasive and highly. Yeah, I, I lo- I'm. I need to try that. That's amazing. I'm like, I'm like, yeah, it was pretty cool. Good idea. That's very cool. Uh, next point here, moving along on the, this dad method. So we talked about differentiate. Now we're talking about attract for engagement. So again, you can't just be the weirdo, right? And maybe that captures them for a second. But like, what do you do past that? Can you dive a little bit deeper into this? And I think this really applies to to both sides of the mic equally. I'd say. Yeah, you have to understand the pains, the challenges, the problems of your audience. That's what's attractive. So. Um, Weird is not the goal here, and that can be kind of repulsive. It is something that's unexpected, and they'll give you their ear for a minute, but then we need to say, I get you. I remember watching um, a TV commercial, and this kind of epitomizes how something even difficult to have a conversation about can be attractive. It's a picture, it's a video, a commercial, of a guy, a young guy with his wife and young daughter. So it's a super young family. And this guy's watching something on television that has him enthralled. You can't see the TV. You just see the glow of the TV. And he's like so into it. And his wife and daughter are smiling behind him, almost like proud that he's watching whatever he's watching. But all of a sudden, his eyes go wide and something traumatic about to happen. You see his wife, it's all in slow-mo, leaps up and she puts her arms over his shoulder and his waist and lock her fingers together, kind of like a seatbelt. And the daughter does the same thing around his lap, locking her fingers together, and it cover, it makes a seatbelt symbolically. And then all of a sudden you see this impact as shards of glass come at him and he's like this in an impact and they're embracing them. And then the statement comes up, it says, seatbelts don't just save lives, it saves families. Click it up or, or click up or something. I was like, oh my God, that was such a profound commercial and so attractive because it spoke to when I was watching it, I happened to be a guy. I happened at that time to have a young family. I was like, I really got to start clicking my seatbelt every single time. It's about them. It got the message across because it spoke the language I use. So attraction is whatever the challenge or problems that you're serving or clicking the seatbelt, make sure you speak in a language that the community says, you get me. And that commercial got me. Yeah, that's a great example. You know what I, I, what I think when I hear this point is – that when someone's listening to your podcast or you're a guest on somebody's podcast, <clears throat> you've got to deliver on the promise that, that you make. Like whatever the title says, whatever you claim your expertise is, whatever it's about, you have to actually deliver on that. Like that's how you get the engagement. You don't get the engagement if I'm like, Mike, I'm going to bring you on to talk about getting different with your marketing. And the whole time we just talk about guitars. I didn't deliver on the promise. Like no one's going to that's, that. that's huge, right? And that's missed all the time. I would even invite some people to try out some front loading techniques. This is stuff we do as authors is make a promise, but give the reader, in this case, the listener, early wins. Because if they got to listen to all this content and then you find the solution somewhere buried in the middle, you may never get there, and then you'll never up for the next episode. So give them early wins right from the get-go. Maybe you have the minute summary in the front of the show. Like consider different approaches to it that will engage the audience. That's really smart. Thanks for that, that bonus there. Before we move on to the second D for direct here, uh, we're going to get into before that, I think there's something really important we have to talk about here because we're talking about differentiate and attract. And I think a lot of us who listen to that feel instantly like, okay, I've got to be a little bit different than who I actually am. Right. And I find that very common. You've yeah. got to speak to this point for us and how important it is to not do that. Yeah, that's the grand mistake, right? The second you're not you, it's inauthentic. And we can sniff it out. Gosh, the whole world's gotten so good at sniffing out frauds. Oh, yeah. We're pretty good at even figuring out like when there's a deep fake, like, oh, there's something wrong. That's not the real time cruise. Like that's how good we are. So imagine you not being you. We can sense that something's askew. And even worse, if we don't sense it, we don't catch it, but we find out later on, then we're like, oh my God, you're a fraud. That's even worse. So if you fake it until you make it, people are going to figure out that you faked it and you ain't going to make it. So 
just lean into yourself. How I suggest being different is evaluate where your idiosyncrasies are and amplify some certain elements. It's truly you. It's just a little bit more. What I did was um, I sent out uh, some notes to people I knew when I was in grade school, some in college, and some I know today. Some people I haven't talked to in 30 years and simply said, hey, I'm really trying to figure out my own uniquenesses. Do you mind just sharing with me what you remember about me, what you feel made me unique? And it's unbelievable how many people wrote back. I then went through it and noticed that, oh, there's certain common thread, threads. I can make some some complex stuff simple. Um, I definitely have a goofy sense of humor, and that's never left me. It's, it's a third grade humor. Um, but I notice these common threads, and it's memorable. So I'm like, oh, lean into those elements because it's truly me, but it's different than the common noise that people are hearing. That right there, man, that, that's a that's a life hack. Like that works with this whole marketing thing we're talking about, right? Being a podcast guest, being a podcast host, but really doing that can help you discover who you actually are. I, I'm yeah, you're friend- ha- right, and you're happy in your own skin. Yeah, I mean, how? It, I- yeah, I, I really encourage us not to look at other podcasts and say, oh, I just want to be just like that show. I got to be like that show. I feel like it. Let's copy it. I have my own website is, is unique for author websites. My designer, uh, her name is Liz. People reach out to me and say, who's your designer? I'm like, oh, no problem. It's Liz. She calls me. She's like, they want your website. I'm like, yeah, let them do it. It's a mistake, though, because people are like, I, I want Mike's website. It's so good. And then they copy it, but it's not them. And, and it, it's something's disjointed. They feel icky about it. It's not really their sense of humor. It, it just doesn't work. And uh, the common response is just just amplify who you are. Definitely, definitely look at other elements of other people, other platforms, and see what you like and resonates with you. But then pick the elements that combine kind of Frankenstein to who you really are, and then it's something fresh again. Man, that's so good. And I, I love the the whole self discoveries which you kind of go into. And I encourage yeah. every, everybody on either side of the mic dive into that. Um, Mike, for for time's sake here, Jim, dive into the last one here now. Direct for results. Can you talk about what this means? Yeah. So direct is give people a specific, tangible, actionable thing to do that is going to sustain the relationship or or bring about the final transaction. Ultimately, any kind of marketing, we're trying to move people to some kind of transaction. And uh, the mistake is, hey, hope you loved uh, what I'm doing. And then silence. It, it's that awkward moment. Like we started a show off. It's just us sitting there and it's like, what are these weirdos doing? It may look cool, but there's nothing to do. Um, so what we need to do is ask for them to do something. Now, a couple things. If you ask too big, you'll turn people off. Could you imagine like any show you're like, hey, hope you loved it. I also do consulting for $10,000 a minute. Uh, please put down your deposit right now. I suspect you won't get one. Uh, the other one is you could say, hey, hope you love the show. Invite you to make sure you download next episode. It's such a small ask um, that that if anyone does it, you're not going to gain any momentum or value toward those transactions you want. So what is the appropriate exchange? And I would test it out. It could be maybe collecting contact information. Hey, hope you enjoyed the podcast. I do have a free bonus episode. And selfishly, I'm looking to stay in touch with you. So if you're willing to give me your email, I'll give you a bonus episode and we can stay in touch. Plus, you can subscribe at any time. That's a, a, an ask that moves you in the one direction and you can keep the transaction going. Or maybe it's like, hey, thanks for listening to the podcast. Uh, hopefully you learned some transformative stuff. You know, I will do a transformative coaching session with you for 15 minutes. It's a legit coaching session. I won't ask anything about you. I'm just going to be there to serve you. Uh, and at the end, I'll ask if you want to talk further. If you're up for that, call this number or something. Like, test out different transactions that step you toward the final goal you have. That's what a direct is. Yeah, that... Uh, so first off, the one thing I'm hearing with this direct idea is it's just one thing, right? It's one a mistake thing. if you do two or uh, more than that, right? There should just be one single. Yeah, one thing is it starts diluting people. It confuses people. You know, if you have two different communities you're serving, then you start doing a split technique. So you may say, hey, go to this website and then tell me if you are a podcast host or a podcast listener. And then you can have a different offer. But if you say on the in the initial ask, hey, if you're a podcast host, go here. If you're a podcast listener, go there. You're already starting to confuse and you're overwhelming. So try to move people down a very narrow, singular path. Yeah, uh, that's really great wisdom. And as a guest, it's the same thing. So host or guest, this matters. One question, if you're a guest, do you recommend having a different URL every time you're on a podcast? So that way you know where the traffic came from? Or what, what are your thoughts on that? Oh, that's great. Uh, so the answer, I, I never really thought about that, but uh, yeah, yeah, right? 
So that's genius. So that's you gotta call Liz, aren't you? You're about to get Liz on the phone. <laughs> yeah, get Liz, hurry up. Yeah, it, it's a keying technique. So I talked about that in the, uh, in the book. It was, it's derived from direct marketing. If you're getting a marketing piece and it says, uh, you know, uh, act now, call this one eight hundred number, dial extension seven. Um, that's a keying technique. They're seeing that postcard. Whoever dials extension seven only got that postcard. If you ever hear a radio commercial and they're like, hey, tell them Joe sent you, Joe is a key. That side knows, oh, the commercials that use the word Joe are working, but the ones when Sue sends, we're not getting one. Let's drop those commercials. Well, we need to do the same thing. As we bring in opportunities, we want to see what the sources of those opportunities are. So if you're a guest on a podcast, yeah, by all means, give a unique URL and you'll see what podcasts are serving you. It's a great, and I'm not, and I'm not doing that. So that's a freaking great idea. Thanks, man. Appreciate you. Uh, moving on here to kind of the final point we'll get into is just this idea. You've talked about experimenting, measure, amplify, repeat. Like those are things that you talk about. And I want to get hone in on one specific thing, talking to people who listen to you on podcasts when you're a guest or if you're the host, how important do you find it is to actually get on some sort of one-on-one -on -one call? Like, is that something that you have seen value come from? And would you recommend that to podcast? Oh, guests? Like prior to the interview? No, sorry. Like after, like if someone's like, Hey, I've been listening to your show, really enjoyed it. Like getting them on a call. Like, is there oh, oh, I see. Like, like a listener of your show? Yes. Widely effective if it's your target audience, right? So I used to have a podcast for a long time. We did 300 plus episodes and we get fans of the show and some people call and just say, I don't like the swearing. My child's in the car and we're driving to school and you're really a jerk. And I'm like, okay. Um, tell me about you. And they're like, well, I one day may start a business. Uh, right now, you know, I'm living off the estate of my parents. It's like, oh, you're not my target audience. Um, you know, another call may play out. Someone's like, dude, you're freaking hysterical. It's the, it's the only break I have from work. Uh, I'm working like a hound and then tell me about your business. Well, I'm an entrepreneur and I'm constantly working. I, when I take lunch, I just listen to your show to get a laugh and learn. And so qualify those candidates. I believe that um, you can get your best insights from your best customers. So you definitely want to uh, take their feedback and solicit it. So, so ask for that. At the end of the show, say, hey, listen, I'm looking to improve the show. If you're a fan of the show or a hater of the show, I want to hear from you. Fill out this form and maybe, just maybe we can have a conversation on the phone, something like that. That's good. I, I really like that. That's a good tip right there. Good stuff. Mike, man, I, I appreciate your time. Again, this has been our third interview together. Thoroughly enjoyed it's it. Awesome. Before I let you go, I got to get a final thought from you. I've always asked you for that. Just something on this topic we covered, something that's going to really resonate with podcast guests and hosts. What do you got for us as your final thought today? I would say start waking up 15 minutes earlier in the day and add something new to your routine. I found since I started a routine, I, I get up pretty religiously at 530. I, I don't use an alarm clock, but I go to bed at a certain time. And by 530 in the morning, I'm usually up. I have such an established routine now. It's been transformative in many aspects of my life. Um, meditation, exercise, and all stuff. But it doesn't really matter what you're doing. I think we need to get in the routine of having a routine. I think too many of us like, I gotta do all these amazing, these things, and I'm gonna change my life, and we give up. I found if you simply get 15 minutes earlier and start a routine, maybe it's just watching the sunrise, or maybe it's just taking a long sips of coffee with no, no sound, nothing, no media, just sitting still. But once you get into that routine, then you'll be inspired. Oh, maybe I can start another routine and another. And I think it may be transformative in all elements of your business and life. Mike, I love that, man. Thank you so much. And thank you once again for the value you've added to me and to the whole audience today. I really, really appreciate you. Dude, it's always a joy. Thank you, brother.